All right, this is Travis Wayne Goodsell. I was about to crash from my only having four hours of sleep last night. And uh, so I'm having lunch right now, so I'll pause whenever I want to take a bite <laughs> so as not to di disturb your peace. Uh, uh, but I came up with another movie idea as I'm saving uh, <laughs> the Exodus Watch one. <laughs> So, uh, um, this one is about uh, the LDS Church's uh, ward financial scandal. So, hold on a minute. Okay. Uh, when I was in uh, Canada, Cran Raspberry, 100% juice, not juice cocktail. can't be called juice if it's cocktail but nevertheless they do punch would be better <sighs> all right so um, in Canada uh, I was involved with uh, a state calling because outside of Utah you get elevated just by attending church <laughs> So uh, I was in a state calling, and uh, where I was discussing with the bishop about uh, ward finances and the budget, and uh, the bishop at that time uh, told me not to worry about the budget. Let's do what we need to do, and uh, and so okay. Um, then I come down to Utah, and I'm stuck as a refreshment coordinator. In the singles ward, the younger singles ward, after uh, um, the abandonment and divorce of the first wife. Uh, so you can see a big difference. In Utah, you get a makeshift job, our calling of the Lord. That's nothing, it's worthless. And. Uh, uh, whereas outside of Utah, you get elevated to high and holy callings. <laughs> so, uh, I'm turning orange. Trump orange. You know Crayola is going to come out with a crayon called Trump orange. <laughs> Just you watch. <laughs> And they made <laughs> Trump tan orange. <laughs> I would be <laughs> I'm surprised SNL hasn't come up with that skit yet. <laughs> so there you go, SNL, for next week. Trump tan orange Crayola crayon. <laughs> All right. And so Uh, with them, uh, I, they said, we have a, a, a budget, we want you to stick within the budget, but they wouldn't tell me what the budget was. And they just said, you know, buy snacks for the firesides and the activities that we have. And, uh, and so I was all alone, buying the food and, and serving the food, while all the other singles got to mingle with each other. So, yay, I'm where I belong. <laughs> Pause. So, uh, he would never tell me what the budget was. And so I would just go out and buy the snacks. And I realized that there were enough young women who were not happy with uh, sugary snacks, which is the traditional uh, snack food for uh, rest refreshments. And so I started getting uh, fruits and vegetables with dips and uh, bagels and cream cheese. And, and uh, uh, the uh, bishop of that ward uh, then said, um, <laughs> that's great 
that you're being more health conscious. <laughs> but you're now pushing our budget. <laughs> and so I said, screw this. I, I bought it myself from then on. I didn't turn in the receipts to get money back. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> the way the church has it working is that uh, sacrament attendance is uh, reported to the church headquarters and that determines their budget for the next year. If uh, sacrament attendance is low, you get less budget money. The idea being that you need to drum up more sacrament meeting attendance in order to get more tithe payers coming out to church. That's the, the thinking of the church. And, uh, and so uh, when I was in the older singles ward, uh, our sacrament meeting attendance in the 7200 South uh, uh, by the fire station and everybody here in Utah knows what I'm talking about. It's Fort Union Boulevard and the fire station right behind that church. I don't know if they're still using it, but yeah. Pause. Okay. And so in that uh, instance, uh, the stake president cut us off from funding just completely. We got enough for materials, for the course courses and stuff, but beyond that, no entertainment. We weren't supposed to have any funding for entertainment. And uh, this is an older singles ward. These are where successful career women <laughs> who chose career and education over marriage are now wanting to get married and of course, there's no men <laughs> who did the same thing. And, and so there's lots of singles in Utah as a result. Uh, and then of course, the divorcees, that's usually the men quality or the men who uh, nobody wanted. <laughs> so they never got married. And they're still living with their mommy and daddy uh, <laughs> as I was but I was ruined financially because of what was done to me by the church and my parents and the woman formerly called my wife the first wife <sighs> really bugging me with this light <laughs> I don't want Trump tan <laughs> And so uh, uh, the reason why is because he said, we have seniors in our stake that need that money. <laughs> pause. <laughs> I hope I'm clicking pause to record. <laughs> so that you're getting the full understanding here. And so the stake president was laundering <laughs> the Holder Singles Ward funding because we would go all the way back to the stage in the cultural hall, the Freemasonic cultural hall. And, uh, uh, and so, yeah, our budget was huge as a result. But the stake president wouldn't have that. He wouldn't give it to us. And so uh, he was laundering it to the uh, the older uh, ward that we had in the stake out there. And uh, his justification was they need the money. And uh, there's an interesting thing about older wards, uh, senior wards, is that uh, the reason why there's low att sacrament meeting attendance is because they're too elderly to attend sacrament. They need the sacrament brought to them. In this ward, for example, that I'm in now, uh, the, the uh, uh, teachers 
and the priests will go out to the uh, the uh, homes of uh, the elderly who request the sacrament that were unable to attend church. So for today, for example, they should have uh, um, um, I can't remember her name, uh, uh, but Paula and others in the ward uh, who are not able to always attend church, uh, they need the sacrament. And so uh, on my mission, hold that thought, on my mission in New York, New York, uh, I was getting pressured by the district leader, um, Elder Ames especially, he's a Utah boy, he's a disco uh, DJ, you probably know him, uh, he does the underage dances, <laughs> mostly, he'll do the other ones, but the underage ones don't know him, <laughs> and so they hire him, <laughs> and then he screws over his employees not paying them enough money and so several of them have done their own DJ work and uh, so <laughs> anyway <laughs> so yeah Elder Ames was a butt on the mission too I don't know why they put him in a district leader position because <sighs> he was poaching in our area in Poughkeepsie <sighs> But that's how we got a hold of the Rincones, the Rincone family, is because uh, he had poached them first, but we were complaining about him poaching, and so he gave up the Rincone family to us. <laughs> and so, yay, I got my first baptism, first baptisms on my mission <laughs> after a year of being out where everybody else was baptizing the whole mission was baptizing 200 a month. Uh, they were just, and so everybody was baptizing 200 for their mission. Where, me? Just the Rincones. <laughs> there was another guy. Excuse me, when I first went to Poughkeepsie. Uh, but I don't count him, because I didn't do any of the, the investigating teaching. He was just already ready to be baptized when I got there, so I don't count him. <laughs> and so the Rincones were the ones that I actually went all the way through all the lessons and, uh, and got them baptized. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, the harassment uh, we'd get uh, was, uh, it was Newburgh uh, in this particular time. Uh, uh, where the pressure for numbers was hitting us hard. And uh, so it was a, a different district leader and a different zone leader. And uh, the, uh, uh, they were calling us every night to get our numbers. And so I'd give them the numbers. And they at first were clueless. <laughs> Pause for effect. But then they started realizing, hey, your numbers are the highest among all the missionaries, except for baptisms. <laughs> What's going on, Elder Goodsell? <laughs> and one morning, the, uh, the zone leader did a surprise visit early in the morning and went straight for our records. We opened the door, he pushed his way in, went straight for our records. Where's your records? They're in the dining room on the table. I had designed a record system of all of our work that we did. Everybody. I, I had Google Maps before Google Maps even came out, before the internet. <laughs> and uh, I 
had all of it. And so when I say that we were connecting the citizens in the neighborhood uh, to each other, genealogically, I'm not kidding. And we'd say, oh yeah, we visited so-and-so. Oh yeah, that's my cousin. <laughs> Newburgh has a, uh, a little city. Uh, it's sort of like a, a little Tokyo, but a, uh, or a little Soho, or a, a little um, whatever. Uh, this was little Newburgh, little New York. It was Newburgh, and it was uh, devastated by the, the war on drugs. And so you can still see the uh, buildings that are still boarded up from the drug raids that they held. And uh, is it Geraldine Ferraro, the one woman who ran for vice president? Or, yeah, ran for vice president and lost. Uh, she has uh, the one building there uh, that's named after her. And then on the other street uh, towards the river uh, is the YMCA, uh, where uh, the kids can also go for uh, uh, safety uh, to do stuff socially with, with other kids. So both centers were available for the kids in the neighborhood. And so, yeah, I got lots of stories of Newburgh. And that's where I saw Wilt Chamberlain uh, was there in Newburgh. Uh, he came to the YMCA. Uh, uh, and uh, my companion, Mark Augustine, uh, knew about it <laughs> I won't tell you how he knew about it I'll tell you if I ever tell the story um, but uh, yeah we ended up meeting him as a result yeah he didn't like us white boys <laughs> coming into a, a dominantly black neighborhood with um, black kids uh, trying to uh, elevate themselves out of their condition and have refuge and all that so <laughs> uh, anyway uh, uh, the numbers they saw okay you may actually be doing the numbers that you're claiming on the phone hmm okay and so they went back consulted with mission president Creel Coford <laughs> and so uh, he eventually said hey, I understand you do records yeah, <laughs> we need your help with the membership records in the Bronx. That's how I ended up in the Bronx. But uh, what they eventually found out was that uh, uh, when uh, Mark and I would go on splits, when he would go to the mission president to say, I can't stand Elder Goodsell. He's, he doesn't what do what I want him to do. And, and it, it's just so hard. <laughs> In other words, just being a baby, not realizing that we are doing work. And all he had to do was just, uh, anyway. <laughs> so when he would go off to the mission president and not tell me that it was for the mission president, but that it was a split with either the zone leader or the district leader, depending on who was driving him out to the, see the mission president, uh, I would be with the other uh, companion, and uh, I would do the, the work with them. And so when I did the numbers, I counted the split as separate, so that they were combined in the numbers. Okay, so there's probably a glitch on the screen as the save finished. Let me pause here for a second. I just set up the uh, LDS Exodus watch video. It's just 172 years old. Leave it alone. <laughs> and put two theme songs. <laughs> which if you don't click on those, you're not going to understand the symbolism. And I did a screenshot from one of those songs 
in the music video that I talk about in the video that I made. <laughs> Travis, you're so horrible. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I have too much fun with this. This is this is my life's my life was meant to be. <laughs> my dad said that when he got a scanner for the first time and was able to scan the uh, <laughs> family photos into a digital format and then make a book. <laughs> he thought that was his life's mission. <laughs> okay, Dad, you have that one. I'll stick to being the one who deciphered Paleo-Hebrew, Egyptian glyphs, the, the Bible connection with Egyptian, and the invention of numerous board games. <laughs> yeah, you can have your scanning job. <laughs> and so, <laughs> oh man, where was I? <laughs> Ah, okay. <laughs> ah, numbers on the mission, and uh, tying it into wards uh, funding, <laughs> and so yeah, I was doing that with the numbers. Every time we would go on a split, it counted for that particular number number of hours in the day sometimes we'd be over 24 <laughs> and so uh, yeah they finally decided okay we're not gonna we're not gonna uh, count your your numbers give us the actual numbers that is the actual numbers we did splits so it counts <laughs> They didn't like that. And so screw them. I didn't like giving numbers. <laughs> because then they would say, What are you going to commit to this week, Elder Goodsell? What do you mean, what am I going to commit to? I'm not going to commit to anything. I'm going to go out, do my job, and if there's nothing, nothing. If there's something, something. I can't control other people's agency. And so, but it's like a sales job, Travis. If you just, if you just fool them in the right way, you can get anybody to be baptized. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but we have elders who are baptizing young single women at a record pace. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. And so, <laughs> yes, we had that problem. <laughs> there were certain elders who were baptizing like crazy, but all of them were single women. <laughs> and so, yes, there was some concern and there was some incidences where they had to be removed from the location because they were dating <laughs> and some were having sex so they had to be sent home <laughs> uh, and so uh, yeah that was the numbers thing and so I don't understand why the wards won't utilize that same exact principle that I was using on my mission. When you send the Aaronic Priesthood to give the sacrament to the elderly, you count it as sacrament meeting attendance. If you don't, you're going to get screwed on your budget. And so that's what the stake president needed to do with that uh, senior ward is just count them. Send the the priest the sacrament to the people. If you can't have a meeting with them, if they're not in a home, 
an elderly home, if they're in separate homes, visit each home. Spend your whole Sunday doing it. Give them the sacrament and count it as attendance. That's all he had to do, and they would have gotten the necessary funding rather than stealing it from the singles ward, denying us our exaltation to meet people without having money to pay for dates. Because <laughs> we've been financially screwed by a previous wife, and the successful women were compromising their standards by having to pay for the guy. <laughs> That's how they think here. It's just unbelievable. And so, yes, out of frustration one day, somebody was talking to me about uh, uh, how uh, they have to pay so much money to take a woman on a date and how frustrated it is. And I said, yeah, Mormon women are higher priced prostitutes. <laughs> because what is marriage for? It's permission to have sex. <laughs> what do you do with a prostitute? <laughs> you pay her so that you can have sex. What is a date? You pay the woman indirectly you give her dinner, you give her a movie, you give her flowers, chocolates, teddy bears, jewelry. It's all that you can have, so that you can have sex after marriage in the Mormon church, it's supposed to be. <laughs> and so, yeah, if women uh, force you to date them for years and years before they feel comfortable enough with you, you're having to pay more money than it would cost to just go out and pay a prostitute. Thus, Mormon women are higher priced prostitutes. <laughs> That's all because of our economy that we have. They set it up to have that type of system. And then they punish prostitutes, but they don't punish Mormon girls for forcing the dating scene for so long. <laughs> <laughs> because if you don't get married when you're young and at first at BYU, you don't get married until you're about to lose all your eggs. <laughs> and then fear kicks in. Oh no, I'm not going to have kids. I'm going to be an outcast in the church. Yes, for guys, it's 26 years of age, it's a volt, and six years of age, 26 years of age, when a man becomes a menace, menace to society. Brigham Young said that, and so when Steve Young was not married at 26, he chuckled and, ha, oh, ha, oh, ha, oh, yeah, my third grade grandfather said that, and oh, I just haven't found the right woman. All he had to do was pick. All women were begging for him to marry them, and so he ended up converting his wife. <laughs> the Mormon girls weren't worthy. <laughs> So, uh, I'm going to go back and fix that error on the program there. And uh, so we're done, we're done here. That's, that's the church financial scam, and that's how uh, it can be fixed. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the church uses tithing money. They In the beginning, they had budget money uh, that you can donate to, the budget fund, or... Uh, Temple fund, you know, all these different funds that you can donate to uh, to help compensate for the lack of tithing. But tithing doesn't go for the poor. That's the one sad thing about the church. You have to pay your dues in order to go to the temple and get Mormon exaltation, which is Lucifer Luciferian exaltation, as I've already established. So, yeah, the whole thing is just ridiculous. And you have these prophets who get their education at BYU in business, finance, uh, and uh, investing. And yet they're screwing up the church. <laughs> they can't figure it out. 
They don't understand. <laughs> what are we doing wrong? They must be the devil working hard against us. <laughs> well, it may have something to do with you not having authority to receive revelation for the church. <laughs> have you thought of that? <laughs> You can't criticize the brethren, even when the criticism is true. <laughs> I should put that clip in here, too. Uh, oh, man. Laughing so hard, I'm getting a headache. <laughs> All right. It's most likely the light, though. Burning my eyes, the flesh it burns. <laughs> to take a... A random muses comment. All right. <laughs> There's just so much in the church, Mormons. I just, it's just unbelievable. I'm over 600 videos now, going towards 700. The church is wrong. It's false. It's evil. And it's dragging you down. Get out. Save yourself. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I'm not even getting to the, the four pillars that I want to get to. I want to use that, that, that gift thing. I can include it with the uh, song theme that I have now. All right. That's it for this one. <laughs>